Welcome to DeFine, the podcast making the most important projects in crypto easy to understand and accessible to all. This week, we speak to Paul from Morpho Labs. Good morning, Paul. Welcome to DeFine Podcast. Thank you for being here. Please tell us who are you and how did you get into crypto? Yeah, so I'm Paul. I'm 21 years old. Got into crypto uh, seven years ago, uh, first working on consensus algorithm and distributed algorithm. So I was more focused in the beginning on, on the blockchain and how they work. And progressively, I was interested in the Ethereum uh, blockchain and how we can build decentralized application on top of them. So started being interested in DeFi in 2019, even though at the time the, the experience was was difficult. And in 2020, I, I came across the, the lending pool mechanism that was introduced by Compound. And it was uh, for many reasons, and I think we'll have the chance to, to discuss it, uh, really a breakthrough to me in the mechanism design of how decentralized finance is working. And, and from there, I started modeling DeFi protocols from theoretical point of view and started trying to improve them and finding new primitives, new ways of, of doing DeFi, exploring paths that were an expo before. And from there, uh, Morpho was born and co-founded uh, Morpho Labs, um, a year ago, and now working full time on the protocol. Yeah. So, what what is uh, your role in Morpho Labs? So, I'm, I'm CEO at Morpho Labs, and so like I do many things, <laughs> including strategy, protocol design, and and growth. Since Define tries to break the you know hard concepts of DeFi into easy to digest chunks of knowledge that everyone or almost every, anyone can understand. Let's let's get let's dip into that. If you were at a dinner party and talking to someone who's new to crypto and how would you explain your project in simple terms? Yeah sure. So well the first thing is to remind people that crypto in the first place was about making money exchanges without a centralized service like a bank. So crypto is about making money transfers without banks. And Morpho uh, is about making lending services without a bank, basically. So it's a protocol that is decentralized, so it's alone and autonomous, and it enables anyone to uh, lend to assets and borrow crypto assets. Uh, through uh, the Ethereum blockchain, basically. And so many protocols does the same, do the same thing, but Morpho is, does it in a, in a very optimized way and is particular in the fact that it's built on top of existing solutions. How exactly is built on top of existing solution? Um, what, is, what, what is wrong with the traditional lending platforms? So lending platforms were introduced, so decentralized lending platforms were introduced approximately four or five years ago, uh, where they tried to replicate what's working in traditional finance into the decentralized world. So basically, you had users that wanted to lend money, so they posted offers uh, where they said, okay, I want to lend one ETH at uh, this rate, uh, 1%, and who's going to borrow from it? And, and the problem with such a model is that at the time, in 2018, no one was really using DeFi. So uh, when, when you posted an offer, no one was actually borrowing money from it. So it was not working uh, really. It was re very liquid. And, and when someone borrowed your money, there was no way you could actually get it back instantly. So those were the very first protocols. Uh, and was not, they were not working in the decentralized environment. So at some point, some teams came up with new concepts. And, and this new concept was introduced, uh, like became popular in 2020 uh, and are known as lending pools. So lending pools are basically uh, a big pool where anybody can lend its liquidity. So if I have some crypto, crypto assets, I can deposit them on Aave or in Compound and, and yeah, and earn interest on them. And I'm earning interest on them because on the other side of the market, someone is actually uh, borrowing 
the crypto assets and pay interest uh, for everybody. So enabling the lending pool was really a breakthrough at the time because it enabled anyone to deposit uh, crypto and directly generate interest and withdraw at any moment. So a smart contract or a user could use uh, Compound or Aave uh, when they want. They could borrow when they want and they could withdraw when they want, which is not something you could have uh, with the first models. So this model was really uh, finding a market fit in the in the blockchain environment. And this is why we, we saw, like for example, the DeFi summer in 2020, and we saw Aave reaching uh, all-time highs around 30 billion of uh, liquidity uh, uh, so of market size, so which is really big. But the trade-off, in order to have this very liquid experience, uh, there was a trade-off. And, and this trade-off was that those lending pools are stacking a lot of idle liquidity, right? In order for anyone to withdraw at any time, to borrow at any time, uh, they have to have the liquidity somewhere in a smart contract that is sitting idle. And it's not working, okay? It's not borrowed, it's there, and it does nothing. And this is a capital inefficiency that is actually very visible, okay? Uh, it's very visible because if you go to the Aave website or to the Compound website, you, you would remark that you have a lending rate that is very low compared to the borrowing rates that is very high. So for example, uh, you could have 1% to lend and 3% to borrow. And so the reason why you have such a spread is because of the lending pool model. And so basically the idea is that we have much more lenders than borrowers. And borrowers are going to pay interest for everybody. And so lenders are numerous and they are going to share the interest paid by the few borrowers. So for example, if we have one borrower borrowing at 3%, we'll have three lenders earning yields at 1% because they are sharing the yields. And MoFo is really a protocol that is going to solve this capital uh, inefficiency problem by providing a rate which is in the middle, which is instead of having 1% to lend and 3% to borrow, we'll have 1%, uh, 2% sorry, to lend and borrow. So in the middle, basically. Right. It's, it's, it is very well uh, described in uh, the Morpho's uh, white paper, but I was still asking myself, how do, you, how do we track this peer-to-peer -peer APY and how it is chosen? Yes. So, it's, uh, so Morpho is introducing a layer on top of existing lending pools in order to match users peer-to-peer. -peer. So... If uh, Aave exists, then you have Morpho Aave. If Compound exists, then you have Morpho Compound, et cetera, et cetera. So literally, Morpho Compound is the same product as Compound, right? You, you supply and borrow crypto assets. You have access to the same amount of liquidity. So if you want to borrow billions, yeah, you, you can borrow billions. If you want to withdraw billions, you, you can withdraw billions. Um, you have the same liquidation model, which is like we replicate on chain the same risk model for liquidations. The only difference, basically, from a user perspective, is that you have uh, an improved rate. So what you were referring to that what we refer to as the peer-to-peer -peer APY, which is the APY which is uh, in the middle, so two percent uh, to borrow and to lend that I was giving in the example. So one question is the one you just asked, which is how do we choose, uh, as, as a protocol, the, the mid rate? And it's a very tough question. It's very complex. And, and one way could be, okay, uh, let's just put it first within the spread of compound and Aave such that Morpho compound is always better for a user to use uh, Morpho compound over compound, for example. Because as a borrower, I'm getting lower rates, and as, as a lender, I'm getting high rates. And, and then where in the spreads, well, there are various models. But one model could be if we have many, many lenders and very few borrowers, we could lower the peer-to-peer -peer APY 
in order to make it more advantageous for borrowers because it's going to be cheaper for borrowers. So basically you calculate these peer-to-peer -peer APY also by adding, I think the, 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 your revenue model is a, is a protocol fee that is added to, the, um, to that. So is that calculated within or is that like out of the, uh, out of the um, APY calculation? Yes, so MoFo is a lending pool optimizer. So it's improving the yields of lending pools whilst preserving the same liquidity and the same liquidation parameters. And the revenue model that makes the most sense for MoFo as a protocol is to take a cut of the improvement that is made from the lending pool to MoFo. So for example, if MoFo compound generates uh, $100 uh, on top of, uh, of compounds, so $100 of extra money, then a cut of this extra money would be taken uh, by Morpho. So Morpho uh, is not uh, taking fees at the moment, uh, but the, it, it can turn on a fee switch if it desires to, to, to do so. So it's a possibility for uh, for Morpho to turn that on, a bit like what we're seeing with Uniswap P3, like Uniswap in, in general. But at the moment, it's turned off. And, and the reason is Morpho is a very uh, low-level product. Okay, It's uh, at the very lowest layers of, of DeFi. Actually, Compound and Aave are, are at the very, very bottom you know, of the DeFi stack. Liquidity always, or sometimes, like most of the time, ends up... Uh, on Aave and, and Compound, and Morpho is sitting right on top. So it's really at the bottom. And, and usually when you're at the bottom of a, an, a financial product, you, you try to reduce your fees and you favor volume. So this is where we start. I think it's also a very interesting use case to explain what proxy contracts are. Uh, so Morpho, is, is Morpho a proxy contract or is it, uh, I don't know, a diamond contract? I don't know if you're familiar with the diamond standards and maybe this is a chance this is a chance to tell our audience uh, give give a, a possible definition of proxy contract yes okay so in solidity which is the language of ethereum uh, that is used to, to program uh, decentralized application on top of ethereum there are different patterns in order for a protocol to uh, evolve right and uh, for example, upgrade some of its features, and it's done through some, some very specific patterns known as proxy patterns. And in some cases, you have very specific patterns like the diamond pattern. So it's a, an implementation uh, pattern um, that will separate the logic of what a protocol is doing, like Morpho, from what is actually written on the chain. And it's very interesting because uh, a community, a DAO, thanks to those patterns, is able to have the, the protocol evolve according to, for example, a governance vote by upgrading the logic of a contract without impacting the, its what we call the storage. Uh, so Morpho, for some parts of the code, uses a solidity proxy pattern. It's not, we are not using the diamond pattern, so the diamond pattern is very similar, except it enables uh, a, a full scalability of, uh, of the length of the contract. So in Solidity, you're, you're limited by the length of the contract, and, and the diamond pattern uh, enables you to overcome those limits to some extent, and with certain trade-offs. Now, Morpho is a proxy to two uh, regards. We are Solidity, uh, so Morpho is a Solidity proxy, okay, so it enables the, uh, which enables the upgradability of some parts of the code, but it's also a proxy uh, to Compound, for example. So Morpho Compound is a proxy, but it, those are two different things, two different, uh, so one, you have the proxy at the Solidity level and the proxy at the application level, where Morpho acts as an interface a gateway to compound or a gateway to Aave, an optimized gateway to lending, actually. Very interesting. So you also mentioned earlier that there is a quite often an imbalance 
between the number of suppliers and borrowers. And basically what Morpho does is giving these um, investors and borrowers um, also, or liquidity providers and borrowers the chance to meet directly and have better APY. How is this selection, how is this match happening exactly? Yes, so maybe I'll just come very quickly on the, the main reasons why you have such an imbalance between, between lenders and, and borrowers. So in DeFi at the moment, you have much more lenders than borrowers on Compound and, and Aave. And I would see three reasons for that. The first reason is that loans are over collateralized at the moment in Compound and Aave. So you have to provide more capital than what you borrow. So inevitably, the sum of every loan is such that you have more lenders than borrowers because it's our clutch class. The second reason is that, is that there, there is not such a big demand for borrowing at the moment in DeFi. It was mainly due to leverage, uh, uh, incentivized uh, borrowing for liquidity mining, so protocols like Aave, Compound. So Aave is not doing that anymore, but Compound is still giving out some tokens so that users are incentivized to borrow. And the third reason, which is to me the most interesting one, is that Aave and Compound themselves, they, they don't want too much borrowers. They don't want too much borrowers because if too many people are borrowing from the pool, then there is not, no ideal liquidity anymore in the pool. And this is a, what we call an illiquidity risk people, because people will not be able to withdraw anymore. So the mechanism of Aave and Compound is done in such a way that borrowing rates are higher than lending rates to disincentivize borrowers at some point to borrow too much. And some, so in, in some way, the the interest rates in DeFi are very constrained by those models, where the protocols themselves are deciding algorithmic ways to say, okay, this borrowing rate is going to, to be very high, okay, because I don't want my protocol to be illiquid, uh, which is uh, natural. But in the end, so the interest rates are sort of gained because of that, constraints rather than gained. Um, and so those three things cause a gap between the lending demand and the borrowing demand. So this is the main reason. So now Morpho, to some extent, is solving that problem for many different reasons. So the first reason is that we free the interest rates from uh, is the rates modem that was given uh, by Aave and Compound. So the peer-to-peer -peer APY that we were mentioning uh, does not have to be constrained uh, by the rates of uh, all the, the inequity of uh, Aave uh, and Compound. So it's, it's very free and it could be decided by offer and demand. So that, that's the first point. So if, for example, we are, uh, like Morpho is lacking a lot of uh, borrowing demand, then the peer-to-peer -peer APY can be lowered to attract more borrowers and reduce this imbalance. Okay, that's the first part. Uh, actually, at the moment, on, on Morpho, uh, you have some markets like USDT uh, at the moment where uh, you have more borrowers than lenders, which is not something you don't see at all uh, in DeFi. Actually, it's not even possible on Compound to have this uh, or on Aave. And on Morpho Compound, you have more borrowers on USDT because rates are, are very interesting for a borrower. Uh, and the excess of borrowers that we could not match with lenders are falling back to the pool. So there is a bunch of, of borrowers that are, are, are using the pool through Morpho Compound. Now, when it comes to the question of who do we match, because I think it was the question initially, like how do we choose who's going to be matched, who's not going to be matched? It's a very open research question. And what we've decided with Morpho is basically to first look at the uh, first in, first out model. So it's basically 
I'm the first to be on Morpho, so I should be matched first whenever there is a demand for a match. But the problem with such models is that you can have very uh, easily some, some sort of DDoS attacks where, where people could be supplying a few ways or a few cents of, of money in the contract. And when trying to match people, uh, well, borrow, for example, uh, would spend infinite amount of gas trying to, to match liquidity because it would be matching $1 or one cent uh, of the adversary. So Morpho is exploring paths of uh, efficiency where we put uh, the data structure of Morpho is going to put some, some volumes, uh, some big volumes, uh, for front in the matching process such that you don't have to do too many uh, iterations and gas iterations in order to match uh, big amounts of liquidity. And even though uh, with this, uh, gas consumption becomes too high, then Morpho falls back to the underlying. Mm -hmm. Is this matching ad engine fully scalable? Uh, did you draw scenarios and what are the results? Yes, so that's the main point of Morpho. It was no easy task to do. But our matching engine is a constant time algorithm. So it's a finite complexity algorithm that ends in every scenario. By the way, we, we are about to release a, a, a yellow paper uh, in which we, we did uh, uh, 80 pages formal proofs around determination of the algorithm and, 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 and this kind of stuff. But the beauty of Morpho is that every single function, so provide liquidity, borrow liquidity, repay your loan, or withdraw liquidity, are a combination of two parts. A part which is about matching users and a part which is about terminating the matching if it was not terminated through the pool. So what I'm saying is that Morpho is going to try to match people peer to peer, but if there is not liquidity or if there is no gas, uh, not enough gas, then the matching engine will stop and will do the rest on the landing. This way, you have an infinitely scalable, some sort of order book within the pool of Aave and the pool of Kampa. I had a question, maybe it's a bit of a naive question regarding to this scenario where you basically are dropped back to the to the to the pool, to the landing pool. In that case, since we are using Morpho's um, proxy contract, is my experience at, at a gas level the same as, as if I were using directly the landing protocol or there is like a gas ads that I have to keep in, in account? No, so there is a, a finite amount of gas that is added on top of the uh, uh, underlying pool. So for example, if you borrow capital from Aave, you'll be paying, uh, let's say, 100K in gas. If, if you go to, to Morpho to borrow some capital, you'll be paying first the matching engine, which is of finite size and can be like 100K, and then the, the Aave protocol. So it's an extra cost in, in gas consumption. Right. Coming back to going back to risks and possible vulnerabilities. What is your current assessment of? I know that you've been f uh, thoroughly audited, but still, what scenarios can you draw in terms of risk and vulnerabilities in the future? Yes. So there are mainly three different risks in uh, in lending in general, in decentralized lending. Uh, the first being the uh, illiquidity risk and the illiquidity of, uh, of, uh, of the protocol, which this, uh, make uh, liquidation not possible and, and, and the protocol could go bankrupt. Uh, so the idea with Morpho is that whether it's for the illiquidity risk or the uh, oracle risk that we'll be tackling in a second, is that we copy on chain, we fetch on chain the data of, of the underlying protocol in order to replicate the exact same risk model uh, in, in the same condition. So for example, if I'm borrowing a, a DAI with uh, ETH collateral, I have a collateral factor 
which uh, states that I have to supply more ETH than I borrowed I. And, and more for compound, for example, is going to fetch on chain the collateral factor of compound in order to make the exact same uh, thing. And so from uh, a liquidity perspective, uh, so the liquidity risk is that we more for it will be always able to fall back and to tap into the liquidity of AV or compound, uh, et cetera. So we have the nice property that Morpho compound is as liquid as compound. If you can withdraw on compound, then you can of more on Morpho compound. If you can't withdraw on compound, then you can't on, on Morpho compound. So we reproduce the same experience. Now for the liquidation slash oracle risk, which is basically someone that could manipulate an oracle and be able to, to game the protocol in order to, to steal some funds. Uh, Morpho, again, is going to replicate by fetching on-chain the exact same data feeds that the protocol is using. So again, we replicate on-chain the risk experience. Now to the third risk, which is very different, which is smart contract rates. It's different. Morpho introduces new lines of code. And new lines of code means additional smart contract risk. So Morpho compared to Morpho Aave, for example, compared to Aave, is from a smart contract perspective riskier uh, than Aave. And the core contributors are very well aware of that. And this is why we spend so much uh, time and, and money in security and audits. So, so Morpho, for example, is probably the protocol that was the most audited before launch because we had uh, uh, trail of bits. Uh, spear bits, solidified, pessimistic two times, and a front-end audit with securing, as well as a, a 600k uh, in unified bounty, which is a lot of security efforts. Uh, we are uh, currently about to announce three additional audits. Um, and uh, on top of that, uh, we take a very academic and formal prove, uh, proven approach. So we, we have an internal uh, PhD uh, in formal proving, that is basically uh, formalizing every single part of the code and proving that it actually works the way uh, it should work, and, and proving also some nice properties like the improvement of Morpho compared to the pool, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we're working closely with Surfera, uh, the automatic formal prover, in order to provide the uh, cutting edge uh, security for Morpho, I would say, and almost the probable provable security of the protocol in order to minimize the only extra risk that Morpho introduces. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. I really appreciate when someone goes full disclosure <laughs> on the on the on the possible risk. It, it means Yeah, sure. Uh, People yeah. have to be aware, right? Uh, and yeah, 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 yeah. But from a, a very theoretical perspective, if if you if you take Morpho from a theoretical perspective, it, it provides the same service as compound, but with better rates. Yeah. So it's an improvement to that regard. Then in practice, you have smart contract rates, and it's necessary that people know that. Yeah. It's also interesting how uh, many DeFi projects can be better understood through learning the constraints and the challenges that founders went through. So what would you say have been the main challenges that the Morpho Labs had in putting up more for in terms could be regulations could be multi-chain could be uh, again m securing a, a proxy contract yes so first i would say obviously regulation uh i'm not going to talk too much about it but of course regulation are not ready for DeFi protocols, especially in Europe, and it has been acknowledged by the European par Parliament, and hopefully it will be a solved problem in the, in the coming years. Uh, so it was surely difficult for us to know which legal setup that we were going to adopt. And most of the team is from an academic background, and uh, we were really not comfortable with having a North Shore setup, which is pretty standard. Uh, in, in the space. And so we put a lot of efforts in designing 
a complete setup in France that is sustainable and that is uh, going to be open source in order for anyone to bootstrap its own uh, legal setup uh, in France uh, as, as a French team. And so we're very proud of that. Uh, it, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's a very uh, neat uh, setup and clean setup that enables us to, to feel comfortable, even though uh, the jurisdiction is still you know, uncertain. Uh, and especially we're very uncertain of, of what uh, MICA, the European regulation, is going to pull out in, in two years. Uh, but I would say this was number one. The number two, uh, I would say, is that innovating in DeFi is quite complex for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that you have a lot of paradigms and frameworks that were invented uh, like over the last four years. And it looks like people are not trying to get away from those models to find innovative ways of, of solving problems. There are a couple of protocols working on very different ways of solving problems. But for example, the liquidity pool is something that you have in every single protocol. Like every single protocol is using uh, a pool at some point. But pools are known to be capital inefficient and and no one or almost no protocol is trying to solve some sort of very structural mechanism design problems. And we're more focused at the moment, in my opinion, on, on taconomics design or application design rather than structural mechanics of the proto protocol that could improve the efficiency of DeFi and make it more competitive with traditional finance. So the challenge for us was innovating while being able to profit from the tools and the standards that were uh, put in place in, in Solidity, for example. You have a lot of standards that are here, a lot of security standards as well, but uh, they are uh, according to some frameworks that are widely adopted, but not necessarily the best. So the simple idea here is that Innovating in a very security constrained environment, uh, you have to be very careful because when you design a completely new mechanism, uh, it was not well tested before and, and you have to uh, take security very, very seriously and take maybe longer than what uh, you, another protocol would. Uh, but you're doing like actual uh, improvement. And also, the second point I wanted to mention is that there is, in my opinion, a bad shipping pressure to founders. So it's a lot about shipping, shipping, shipping. And sometimes I'm just like, security first and relevance first. And this, this shipping pressure and shipping pace sometimes push founder to do too many things or ship too many things and bad quality, I would say, or not sufficiently secure protocols. And uh, uh, talking to many founders, I think some of them are really feeling that pressure, the pressure of the token that is liquid as well is another thing. Uh, but the Twitter pressure of having people only, you know, putting the emphasis on protocols that ship stuff uh, can be adversarial, I think, in the long term to the DeFi ecosystem. And so those two were the problems, I would say, we faced. But in the end, we overcame everything and very happy what, with what we have at the moment. Yeah, right. So rephrasing your, 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 your answer, what would be the top three list of things that you would like to see for your project to release some, some weight and something from the ecosystem to happen that would release momentum and help projects like yours thrive better? Yes. So I think the ecosystem uh, in general, not just Morpho, uh, needs a more scientific approach of the project and a more rigorous approach of the project. Uh, of course, we're having a lot of fun with Web3. It's less it's much less taken seriously. I mean, things are serious, but it's a, it's a pleasure to work in an environment where, where people are, are, you know, are not necessarily wearing suits or 
have funny telegram stickers, uh, these kind of things. But I think that putting that aside, when it comes to protocol design, when it comes to uh, entrepreneurship, uh, we have to take a more serious approach to what we should talk about on Twitter, what we should advertise when making a thread, and making sure that we understand deeply the mechanism design of the protocol before you know putting it, putting the, the emphasis on it, or investing in it, etc. So rationalizing more the ecosystem is. Uh, needed in my opinion, and and bear market to some extent uh, is quite beneficial to the ecosystem for that. Right, in, in every cycle uh, that we've seen so far in crypto, bear market were like the the amazing time to work on on new concepts and rationalize like investment, rationalize advertisements and and communication. So I think it's needed to have. I would not say an academic approach, but more of a uh, a serious and rigorous approach while, while preserving the very friendly uh, and open aspect of DeFi where you can have a lot of fun while working, which is very precious in my opinion as well. So yeah, that, that would be uh, the top thing. Uh, and then second thing is to focus more on security. I, I know I've been talking a lot about this, but I still see a lot of protocols that do not audit what they're releasing or do not audit uh, like it's it's a case of almost every protocol, and and sometimes like uh, we forget that it's very much easier to find a hack in the protocol than uh, it would look like. And and one thing is sure is that you have a ton of protocol at the moment that have uh, critical vulnerabilities in the wild and that were not found yet. So I think security has not been taken sufficiently seriously. Uh, in DeFi, and we've seen, especially with the Rex leaderboard, which emphasizes that a lot, that we've been losing billions uh, in this space because of that. And probably the reason why we, we, we've been facing a DeFi winter, for example, is that because smart contract risk is taken seriously by investors, and you can have a better why, but the risk, the concept, like the, the risk of the smart contract can be so high that uh, it's DeFi is less attractive, right? And and the end goal is really to have those optimized primitives that are secure and proven to be secure uh, in order for anyone to use. And if it's not taken seriously, then we're lacking credibility to the traditional world. Right. This is more a gag than a question. But do you think that there is a direct correlation between deciding to establish a company offshore and having this serious approach towards shipping do you think that actually you know taking and putting on the putting your face at stake publicly in your own country makes it gives yourself a little bit more attention it's it's actually a good question so i don't think it's a uh a, a cause like uh I know a lot of projects that are working offshore and that have excellent team and excellent security and so there is nothing to doubt about it or or whatsoever. But probably the fact that Morpho had a very, you know, academic approach and we're, we're not announced, uh, uh, some researchers were publicly known before, you kind of have this social pressure of doing things seriously. And... I never thought of it this way, but it could be that this was one of the reasons why we, we we took security seriously. While if you're in a non, then maybe you would care less because potentially your reputation uh, can only affect your pseudonymous uh, personality uh, rather than your true true social reputation. But I would say it's just a consequence for us does not mean that like uh, an anon would do things uh, uh, in a bad way. Of course not, like you have a ton of, uh, of very, very good security engineers and especially security engineers try to remain anonymous uh, in those cases. So, um, so yeah, but it could be that the fact that we are like have this academic and approach uh, put us to like focus so much on security. Right. Something that I was pleasingly hit by Morpho is also the narrative that it 
you know the the whole concept of the of the um, chrysalis and, and the butterfly etc and i think it's i think it's somehow related to your roadmap so can you tell us about the future of morpho and this stage evolution that your mascot is uh, is basically going through yes absolutely so morpho is a butterfly it's a blue butterfly living in colombia and it's beautiful by the way and the idea is that a butterfly starts as a caterpillar a caterpillar that is tiny and 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 living in an apple which you could consider a pool and you need the apple to to survive and to have some sort of launch pad and to to become something much more important and so morpho is reintroducing all the books thanks to the liquidity problem because other books had liquidity and gas problems pools did not have those problems so morpho decided to combine the two in order to 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 reintroduce this more efficient concept and so our vision for morpho is to build the optimal independent lending protocol so making optimal lending a public good really and and so the end state of that is probably to rebuild some sort of lending order book or blockchain specific lending order book so not a traditional order book but something a bit different that is much more capital efficient that's what was than what we see at the moment and so that would be the independent version that does not need uh ave or compound or any lending pool to work so that would be the butterfly version but to go from the caterpillar to the butterfly uh we would probably need an intermediate step which is chrysalis which is about progressively building an order book inside the pool in order to transform into something that is independent and living without the need of any other protocol so that's basically the vision here uh building the most efficient and optimal uh lending service as a public good uh in order for traditional finance to look at defi and say hey not only this is cool because it's decentralized but it's also cool because it's much more efficient than what we see in traditional finance it basically reproduces the efficiency of traditional finance but without the middleman and without the infrastructure cost of having 1000 banks doing the same thing so the end goal for morpho is opening uh an efficiency in lending that was never reached before such that traditional finance can get interested uh in decentralized lending which is not the case at the moment rates are too low at the moment to interest uh traditional finance in terms of competitors and competition in the same within the same paradigm uh can you mention initiatives or protocols that are attempting the set to place themselves in the same area as morpho i don't think there is any in in the way we do it uh probably because it's very uh i would say we're not going the same path as other protocols we don't even use a pool we have a, a tvl of uh uh depending on how you calculate tvl but basically there is no money on morpho contract right so it's 100% capital efficient so money is either fully borrowed or on the pool so we don't fit in the traditional defi landscape to be honest and there is no protocol doing uh things similar in my opinion however uh you could say that island dharma and other peer to peer lending protocols that existed in the 2018 2019 uh were similar to morpho except that now morpho is also connected to the pool and has a bunch of very cool new concepts uh, that did not exist at the time but yeah there's nothing quite like it at the moment at least from what i know and the goal for morpho is really you know to create as many partnerships as possible to be very open also in the way it evolves such that someone trying to 
compete with Morpho would actually try to contribute to Morpho and get funding from Morpho and work together on the same public good. So this is why I, I, I truly uh, love the public good approach of, of, uh, of uh, DeFi protocols is because we can all work together on, on the same plane. And competition, in my opinion, in the long term, in DeFi, in decentralized protocols in general, is not something we'll see if protocols tend to adopt the common good approach. And so I would try to make Morpho uh, as decentralized as possible so that anyone would be incentivized, incentivized in making Morpho better rather than uh, you know, trying to replicate it and twisting one or two things. Okay, Paul, thank you so much for being with us today. I really loved the going through your white paper it's a uh, i really love the vision the academic approach and i would suggest everyone to go to morpho.xyz and read the read the white paper it's like 20 pages long it's comprehensible and in general i think this is a good habit to to take in especially dealing with defi read white papers try to understand them ask direct questions and extend your knowledge of the of the subject do you have any final statements that you want maybe to address um no just encourage people to to read the white paper and we we are soon be releasing the yellow paper which is the formal model of Morpho, which is much more of a complex read, but still very interesting uh, in, in the coming months. So I'll be very happy to, to share that as well when, when the time comes. Uh, but yeah, I hope people had a great time uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll look into, into the protocol a bit more. Well, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me.